In today's video, I'm bringing you the ultimate A to Z guide for ChatGPT's new 4.0 Canvas. I'm going to show you how to use this for writing and coding, and I'm going to talk about where it really shines. By the end of this video, you'll know everything that you need to know about ChatGPT 4.0 Canvas. Starting out, you're going to notice right away that when you log into ChatGPT, you might not have 4.0 Canvas enabled right off the bat. So what you can do is you can just click on this model drop down right here and you can change to GPT 4.0 with Canvas. If I click on this, which it's in beta right now, as you can see, it's just gonna change to 4.0 Canvas. So this is more of a working approach. This is for people who wanna actually work on a document and they wanna have multiple versions and they wanna have a consistency to that central document that you're talking about as opposed to just dropping in static documents and letting ChatGPT do its thing or relying on the past chat thread. First, let's dive into writing with ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas. I'm gonna pop in this prompt right here, create a workout plan for training for a triathlon in six months. And we're gonna send that off. Now, right off the bat, you're going to notice that it pops it into this side panel right here. And this side panel is what they call the canvas. And this is actually a document. That's the beauty of this is I can scroll through it. I can click into it and I can continue writing here and I can even highlight specific parts like this title right here and I can change things like the size of the heading. I can change if it's italic. I can change if it's bold and I can even ask specific questions. Let's say I wanted to ask about the bike. Let's just highlight this right here and I'm going to ask chat GPT right here. I can say what is the best bike type to use for training and the actual event give me some brands so you can actually have a conversation with it that doesn't necessarily edit this document but in this case it is actually editing it it's adding a few of the best bike types for me right here so that i don't have to worry about it so let's just go ahead and highlight these recommended brands and we're just going to bold that section right there so I can see it and I remember it. When writing with ChatGPT, I can hover over this circle down in the corner and it's gonna give me a few options. The first option is suggest edits. So if I click on this, it's just going to suggest edits over here. It's actually just going to comment them in and this is going to be a great iterative approach for working on this document. Now next, if I hover over this, I can also adjust the length. So if I hit adjust length, it's gonna show me this nice intuitive slider. So let's just make this a little bit shorter. I want it to be easier to read. So I'm gonna make it quite a bit shorter here and we'll see what it does. I really like how it's like that slider right there because it gives me a visual of how much I'm actually changing it as opposed to me just trying to use my words and figure it out. All right, and it shortened it up quite a bit. It made it a little bit more succinct. Now let's hover over and we're gonna go to this next option here. I can select the reading level. Now, a lot of people prompt this stuff in, but now we can just click reading level and we can actually choose if we want a higher level of reading. Let's go with a graduate school level on this triathlon plan. Let's see if it gets into any scientific topics or if it talks about VO2 max and things like that. Let's see where it goes. So yeah, it's talking a lot about muscular endurance. It's talking about those types of things. It's giving us uh, the cadence of our training as well. Very technical. The next quick edit option that we're gonna look at is the emoji option. So if I click this right here, I can add emojis to the text to just make it a little bit more interesting. And I really like this for this use case because it's actually adding these in along the way and keeping me in the loop with what it's talking about. So swimming here, cycling here, running, this is actually a really good use case for the emojis. And finally, let's hover over the edits button right here and let's go up to add final polish. Now add final polish is going to allow me to create basically a final publication of this entire thing fully fleshed out and I can actually publish this now. All right, now this looks amazing. It's got the emojis, it's got everything at the right size. It's got a really solid plan here for each of the months for my training plan. And if I just click right up here, I can copy this now and I can take it over to my project management software or my note taking software, or I could put it in Word or Google Docs and I could print this out, put it on my wall and I could actually follow this training plan. 
Next, let's dive into coding with 4O Canvas. This is going to make it a lot more competitive with some of the other models out there because it's working on that one single source of truth, that one document. So let's go ahead and see what we can do as far as programming and coding goes with 4O Canvas. Here's my prompt. I'm gonna go with create a planetary simulation in 3D using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now this is a really simple prompt. I'm gonna see how it does with the simple prompt. I might have to iterate, but that's the fun of using the Canvas. You can actually improve your code as you're going along. You don't have to get the first prompt right. So let's send this off. All right, so it finished up this file for me and it looks like it just put it in one simple HTML file. So let's go ahead and copy this. Let's take it over to our desktop here. And the way that I'm gonna run this is just by creating a new folder. And I'm just gonna call this planets because this is a planet simulation. So let's go ahead and open this up. We're gonna click into the empty space and we're gonna open this with VS Code. If you don't have VS Code installed, you should get it installed. It's really simple to use. Now we're going to go into our planets folder over here. I'm gonna right click. I'm going to hit new file and I'm going to type in uh, index.html and we'll just go ahead and paste that code. Now, if I click out of my IDE or whatever you're using, Visual Studio Code in my case, I can just double click this index and it's actually going to run this for me. So it is actually giving us the planetary simulation and it looks quite amazing, but I want to add zooming in and out with the scroll wheel because right now I'm just seeing one planet and the sun, but this lighting effect is pretty neat. So let's close this and let's get back into 4.0 with the canvas. I'm going to click on this 3D planet simulation to enter back into this one. And if we hover down here, we can actually see some different tools. When we're coding, we actually have different tools than we do uh, compared to the writing. So if I hover here, you can see port to a language and I can change the language that I want to port to if I don't want to use uh, the current HTML. But overall, this is pretty flexible. It's sliders just like the writing. If I go to fix bugs, it'll actually go through and it'll fix any bugs that are happening in here. And it's just scanning that document and making improvements. Or maybe we want to do a code review. I can just click on this default option right here and it'll actually write up a code review for me. Here, it's actually added comments on these different bits here. So consider making the camera's parameters configurable to improve reusability and make adjustments easier. I like that because I wanna add that zooming in and out feature. So I can hit apply right here, and that's actually gonna go through and make that change on my behalf. And the beauty of it is, is that the AI is coming up with the insights and the suggestions, but it's also doing the work for us. I can continue going through here and applying these different comments if I like the suggestions. Next option is add logs. So if I click on add logs, it's actually gonna start going through here and adding logging so that we can actually pick up on any bugs that we come across when we're running this program. So logging is what you're going to do to be able to communicate when something's going wrong, how it's going wrong. Right here, you can see these console log, starting animation loop, console log, window resized, updating camera and renderer. So it's just basically updating on the back end so the developer knows what's going on. And the final option that we have here is add comments. So if I click add comments, it's gonna go through the code and it's actually going to programmatically add these comments to explain the code. It's not giving us comments in the sense that it's going through and actually adding those suggestions like I showed you earlier. What it's doing this time is it's going through and it's adding to the code comments so that another developer would maybe be able to figure out what's going on here. All right, so I asked it to add two new features here for us. I wanted it to add the planets. I want more planets than just that one planet that we had. And I wanna also add that zooming in and out with a scroll wheel. Now that this is complete, I can copy this and we can take it over to our existing code. I can just right click this anytime and I can open it up with VS Code. And then I can make my change here, paste that in. And we now have 110 lines of code. So let's go ahead and click away from this, reopen index, and we'll see what we get. So, so far, just a white screen. Now this is perfectly fine because this actually presents us with an opportunity. I'm gonna refresh really quick, see if that'll do it. No. See, so if you right click and hit inspect, this is going to give us some valuable insights. Remember when we added that error logging? Well, this is where that's gonna come in handy. We can click right here on console and we can actually see all the errors coming through right here. 
So if I copy this and I bring it back over to ChatGPT, it's going to be able to fix this for us. And it's going to be able to work through this problem that we're running into where we're just getting a white screen. All right. So I said, I have this error code and then I pasted the error code. I said, the screen is just plain white. Fix these, please. So it went ahead and did that for us. It's actually still going through, but once this is done, we can copy and paste it and we can try it again. All right. I got the new code. Let's paste it in. Now we're at 111 lines of code. Let's see if this works. If the problem persists, repeat the same step again, right click, inspect console. And now we have a new error. So we know that we're making at least some progress and I can show that we have this logging right here, initializing scene. So it's getting through some of the steps now. Paste the error codes. All right, so new error codes are in, it's fixing it. New logs, fix this. That was my only command here. So let's see what it does. All right, just adding one line of code at a time, 112 lines of code now. Let's see if it runs. All right, so after going through and giving the console logs and going through multiple conversations, I was able to get what I was after. Multiple planets orbiting around the sun. And look at this, the zoom in and zoom out appear to be working completely fine. So that's awesome. Now, listen, guys, if you are serious about leveling up your game when it comes to artificial intelligence and actually taking it to a professional level instead of just using it as a gimmicky tool and you really want to get that deeper knowledge going and build a network, then I recommend you join AI Foundations. AI Foundations is where you can get in touch with me on a regular basis. So my brother Drake and I, we do weekly calls. We do usually three to four calls a week, and we even give away rewards for participating in the community. So you can actually win money by joining our community. We have a classroom that's chock full with content. And you can even look back on past calls that we've had and you can watch them back. We have a huge library of replays in case you can't make the times that we have on the calendar, even though we have a ton of options available. You can join AI Foundations and learn everything that you need to know about these awesome tools that are being released on a regular basis by using the link below this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.